Let me get your thoughts on this. And this is the only way I can ask this mm. question. What is going on between the West and Africa? Trump hosts Uhuru. Theresa May is in Africa. Angela Merkel Hercules. is in Africa as well. Why the renewed interest it's, all of a sudden? It's very interesting, isn't it, uh, from a geopolitical uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. I think, look, it, when I look at it, um, I think Trump's target is China. The tariff war is, 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 is pointed at China after, you, after the smoke and mirrors, uh, it, it, once you look through the smoke and mirrors. What do I think is happening here? If you look at it, the Chinese largely control the South China Sea. They're expanding into the Indian Ocean with Djibouti, Gwadar in Pakistan. They've taken the port from the Sri Lankans for mm -hmm. 99 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the West wants to push back. So the, the, there is definitely, a, it, my sense is there is a coordinated uh, a Coordinated. Drive, coordinated <laughs> to the degree uh, where people are actually saying, you've got to make a choice uh, up to some kind of point. Is it us or is it them? And I think that's where it's going. Uh, the question is, how do we play that mm -hmm. uh, as a country? You know, how do we play that as a continent? But clearly, there is a desire to push back the Chinese. Okay. And they're also leveraging the following. A lot of these big infrastructure projects mm -hmm. are coming unstuck. A lot of them were heavily inflated. Mm. Money was kicked back to... And this is not just in Kenya. No. Across Africa. Uh, it, it's symptomatic in of Asia. the Belt mm. and Road project. Wow. You know, when you look at it, it, these projects, first of all, were very bold, visionary, looking 20 years ahead, but you have to pay with the now. And if you look <laughs> from Sri Lanka to Pakistan to Zambia... Malaysia. Malaysia. Also ask questions, it, yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So I think they too are sensing this is an opening, this is a time to chip away at the Chinese influence. And if things really blow up, it's going to be very, very tricky. Blow up, I mean debt, uh, d debt problems across Defaults. the board. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I'm reading it. Of course, 30 years, as you said, with that, which is extraordinary when you think we mm -hmm. were a colony. But I was watching her very carefully and, you know, with the dance Where, with in South Africa? Yeah, did you see the dance? The, they're calling it the Maybot. This, <laughs> the, the Maybot has never danced. When I was watching that, I was going, wow, you know, <laughs> what's going on here? Obviously, she's getting on well with Cyril. She was very clever in the distinction she made about the land issue. Mm -hmm. She differentiated herself from Trump. Yes. So I've, I, I'm watching her and I'm, 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 quite, uh, I'm quite impressed. And I think, w you know, I was also listening to Julius and Julius Malema. Malema, exactly. Yeah, I don't know if you, uh, he's, he's asked for South Africa to leave the Commonwealth. You know, he's a mercurial character. I can't put him down. It's like the South African Parliament. It's so uh, hilarious <laughs> and amusing. But, but he, what, what he was talking about is getting out of, out of the Commonwealth. But what I think he's missing is the majority of Africans, we're born free. We don't, colonialism was not as personal an experience to you or me as it was to Mugabe, as it mm -hmm. was to the, and I think she's also, for many reasons, at being an ex-colonial power, but she's playing into that born free generation. She's talking about hum human Commerce capital. Scholarships. You see what Jobs, I'm saying? Jobs, exactly. It's not about what you can dig. She's talking about, let me improve you as individuals. You are the more uh, valuable capital. So I thought that was uh -huh. quite smart as well. But so, so, so let me ask you this. Let me, mm. uh, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. Put yourself in the shoes of President Uru Kenyatta. Mm. And that question is asked, are you going to stay with the West? Are you going to go with the West? Mm. Or are you going to stay with China? How do you answer such a question? Well, if that's what he'll, he's going to be asked. Tactically, we've played it quite well. You, you, have to, you have to admit, over the last 10 years, I think we've managed to keep multiple stakeholders sweet. But <laughs> if, if the choice becomes us or them, I think it's going to be a very difficult one for, for Uhuru. But ultimately, I, I, th I, th I think the bottom line is that w you know, w there are problems coming down the track. Mm. How China handles it will, will, will really be the future of Sino-Africa relationships. The, if, if the African citizen has to pick up the tab for vastly inflated infrastructure proje projects, it's going to be a very big problem for Xi Jinping. I think Uhuru is quite subtle. I watched him in, in, in the States. Okay. And there are very few people who have gotten on that well with Trump. Yes. When you watch the body language, Flawless. I was going, wow. <laughs> you know, and, and that's his skill. He's, he's, he's a bit Clintonian that way. He's very charming. And uh, I, I was thoroughly impressed. I thought, you know, they both need, uh, Trump needs a friend in Africa. Yes. You know, after. after it, he could not have had a worse week. No. Yeah. In, the, right? in so fact, many were concerned that that meeting might not really no. take place. With no. So, I, I, so I think he needs a friend. I think Uhuru has a chance to step up and be the African interlocutor with the White House. Right. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. 
And then I was wondering to myself whether Sal uh, Flavio had anything to do with that meeting because he's, of course, a friend of both of them, Bria mm -hmm. Tori. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, let me ask you this. Do you think the UK, beyond Brexit, would be a better partner for Africa or for Kenya than the UK within the EU? Okay, so let, let's just put the numbers to it, right? Uh -huh. I mean, the EU represents 53% of uh, UK's trade or thereabouts. Africa's 3%. <laughs> And I don't mean to. What a contrast! Uh, it, 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 it's a, a big difference. Big difference. Yeah, you know. So, but uh, uh, that's a that's that, that's what it is. It is what it is. But I think um, the UK is definitely more focused on what I would call the Commonwealth economy. Mm -hmm. It wants to stimulate that Commonwealth economy where they have deep embedded ties. They have leverage. You know. They have tremendous leverage. When you talk about Kenya, we look at the trade number, but we don't think to ourselves Safaricom. Vodafone, EABL, Diageo. Diageo. 100 years Diageo has been here, right? And you look, Barclays, well, now it's changing, but standard Absolutely. chartered. Mm -hmm. And no one measures the value of these are huge businesses that have done business in Africa for decades. They know what's going on on the ground. And I think when you look at it holistically, the UK has a very big role to play. Uh, going absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even bigger than it is right now. Even bigger, because I think they're going to refocus more energy on, on, on Africa. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean One I thing that they're, they're talking about is the war on corruption. Mm. Um, and on the Twitter handle of uh, Nick Haley, Ambassador Nick Haley, he tweeted about two days ago that the UK and Kenya will sign a new agreement to repatriate proceeds of corruption and crime to Kenya. How significant would a move like that be? It is very significant. Mm -hmm. I mean, already what we're seeing are two things are happening. You know, let, let me put it this, this way. This is fine. I was with uh, some bankers in London, the chairman of a big uh, British bank, and he said, Ali Khan, we've got billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Billions of dollars that came in under the old compliance regime. He says, this money will never leave because the day they want to take it back, the question will come, show us the source of your funds. So a lot of money is already trapped, right? Oh, it's man. trapped. Wow. Now the question is, what Hailing is saying, we know these... Uh, pools of capital are trapped, we will now help Europe. It's a big okay, deal. I okay. think, I think uh, I, I've been impressed, really, with the anti-corruption effort. I know there's a lot of cynicism about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Githongo always tells me that this is all smokes and mirrors. But <laughs> the point is, uh, I, I, I've, s I've met the DPP. I'm really impressed with these guys. They seem to be moving at speed. And remember, uh, the corruption has not been rocket science. People have been walking out with gunny bags. Come on. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what more do you need? What <laughs> more do you need? It's not as if you're going on a massive sleuthing exercise that you're going to, you know, so it's hugely <laughs> complex. It isn't. So I think it's a big deal. I think it plays into what the West wants to hear. And I think it's an impressive uh, uh, part of the second term of this administration. Okay. But, you know, I, I suppose let me just also add a personal thing more. You know, I feel that... I'm African, I feel I'm British, I was educated there. Um, and I, I so you have sort of these two lenses that you're looking lenses, out right? of. Two lenses, right? I remember, sorry, just to go, go ahead. ahead. One day, I, I, when I was a young boy in London and somebody was wanted to mug me and he said, you're a Pakistani. And I remember as he hit me, I said, I'm not a Pakistani. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, what I'm saying is, I think we have a tremendous connection with the UK. I think there's a huge opportunity to reinvent that relationship. I think both sides are trying to do that. And I think, you know, we're better off with more friends uh, and particularly them. So, so after, I'm really after, excited about after, this. And, and I want to take this to President Uhuru Kenyatta. After what many have described as a very good meeting with President Trump. Outstanding. Outstanding. Let's body language, outstanding. Everything. And what should be a good meeting with Theresa May. Yes. What sort of Uhuru then travels to China? What's well, he thinking? That's a very interesting... Well, I think Uhuru is also... <laughs> look, those are three big uh, kind of your international stakeholders you're meeting all in the space <laughs> of a week. I mean, if you, you want don't get to... Lucky this is like the rumble in the jungle, right, in it's terms like, of politics. It's yeah. like winning the jackpot, some yeah. would say. I think it'll be a very interesting conversation with Xi Jinping. First mm. of all, of course, we're trying to get the, ra the, f the railway line extended and financed. So, I mean, that's a pretty substantial commitment. I think China probably is our largest creditor at this moment in time. So, you know, you, you've always, what we lesson we know is mm. you've got to deal with your banker, <laughs> otherwise you're going to run into trouble. But I think, you know, he, he will be walking into that conversation uh, quite powerful and muscular and, and really showing Xi Jinping he's not just one of 54, <laughs> he's actually the one.
That's he's actually the one. He's the one at the moment. I mean, if I look around, Abby is really impressing me in Ethiopia. I think that is... Yes, a, yes, he is. Oh, yes. I think he's phenomenal. This is a born free guy. The, what his language, I read him and I'm going, wow. It's his, he's I, young, young, charismatic. Yeah, the he's the talking prime to us. Ethiopia, you, when yes. you listen to him, you think, yeah, that guy's talking my language. Mm. It's not listening to Robert Mugabe at age 92 <laughs> when you're going, what are you talking about? It's not relevant. So I think he's a big deal. I think, I think Uhuru is going to say, you know, I'm a big deal too. And uh, I, think, I think it matters at this point in time, as I was saying, Xi Jinping needs to look very, very closely at this entire relationship with Africa mm -hmm. and how it's going to play out. Because, you know, the, uh, if the tab is going to drop down to you and me, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Should no. Uhuru ask for debt relief of some sort? So Zambia's already asking for that. Zambia's I, already I, asking I, for that. Zambia's asking for that. But, you know, you can see the consequences of that kind of scenario is, is the bond yield. Our bond mm. yields are around 8%. Mm -hmm. The Zambian bond yield started the year at about 6.7. It's, I think, nearly 16%, mm. which means people think they're defaulted. Wow. They cannot pay that bond wow. back. So there's already a haircut. I don't think we're at that point in time, but I think we've got to be sensitive to the following things. Market conditions have changed. If you look around emerging and frontier markets, India rupee record low, the RAND 10% down just in one middle of one night. A lot of panic around. It's not like it was two years ago mm -hmm. when Uhuru would put up his hand or Henry would put up his hand, I want a billion, and everyone say, here, have two. <laughs> Today, they're saying, what happened to the last billion we gave you? What did you do with mm -hmm. it? And we're not that keen on giving it to you again. And this has now become a different environment. So I think, yes, he has to discuss uh, the debt situation and how he's going to manage it. What do you say to those who feel that, despite the excitement of uh, Uhuru's trip to America, Theresa May's trip to Kenya and so forth, that ultimately the West, it's all about the West first. Mm. So even as they come to Africa or as we go to visit them and, and, and talk about deals, a rising Africa to some is never good for the West. Mm. So as dis uh, beyond the optics and the photo ops behind the scenes, they the don't West want us still wants the Africa that is an image of a begging bowl. Yeah. Help us. Do you hold that view? No, Sh I don't. Should we trust the West? I, 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 I don't hold that view. And I think, uh, you know, that, that's a sort of view of Bob Geldorf, who I was... Yes. Do you remember? And his song... Uh, Dambisa you, Moyo. Let me, let me read yeah. you her I'm sure you've yeah. read her book. She's, yes. Uh, and, and talking about aid, for example, she says that despite the first world sending mm. more than $1 trillion to Africa over the past 50 years, uh, poverty levels in Africa rose from 11% to what, 66%? At le least le when le she let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Out of that $1 trillion, how much do you think went to where it should have gone? I should put a caveat then on this particular quote, because that's, that's, right? that's a good question. Uh, right. I really, so I think aid, personally, I, it's a bit of a racket in my view, right? Theresa May said in South Africa, it works. It Two works. The, the, yeah, it, yeah. it works. Uh, it, it, I think the, the the British have quite an interesting view to aid, right? I mean, they have a, 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 a they want to create social impacts so of the aid. And let me give you an example of aid. M-Pesa was was actually funded via a grant by DFID mm. of a million dollars, and then Vodafone matched it. I'm just giving you an example. Now, was that aid? Maybe you turn that aid. Mm -hmm. Look at the impact of something like M-Pesa. So when you, w I think they're more focused on grassroots. For example, mm -hmm. uh, you know they're doing a lot of off-grid uh, solar solutions. So what they're doing is quite clever, I think. What it, what it's doing is empowering people to uh, to uh, operate in the 21st century. Okay. You can't operate if you don't have a light. You can't operate without an internet connection. And I think that I, uh, what I like from what I'm seeing from them is they're really looking at, at, at aid from an impact, biggest impact type of perspective. And I think, so, so getting that back to aid, work, that uh -huh. model, like, there's aid of the old school when you, you, you dump it into a government, you don't know where it's going. Yes. Uh, I don't think that's going to work anymore. And also, the importance of aid is right down. You know, remittances have way overtaken mm -hmm. aid uh, in terms of the absolute numbers. So I think... I, I get Dambisa's point, but I think also uh, I if it's a disaster, you need aid. <laughs> and then I think we need to get away from the aid culture. We need to get away from the aid yeah. culture. Ali Kansachu, banker, CEO, rich management, fascinating conversation.